I mean, as soon as I saw it, I knew it was like a one of a kind, the Gibson that never was, the, the Gibson that almost was. I had to have it. <laughs> This is my 1972 Gibson Les Paul signature. Well, sort of. That's sort of what it is. It's it's actually pretty unique. It's kind of a one-of-a-kind guitar because this is kind of like the Gibson that never was or the Gibson that almost was or the Gibson that like should have been in my opinion and apparently the opinion of somebody else because um, I didn't make this thing but um, my hat's off to the gentleman who did. Um, now, you might be thinking, hey, that's not a 1972. Well, I, I, that's not what that guitar is supposed to look like. So let me explain. This is actually what a 70s Les Paul signature looks like. In fact, that's my guitar. It's for sale right now at Carter's. Um, I own that guitar and I, I, I really like that guitar, but um, I just wasn't getting a lot of use. You see, the thing about those guitars is the pickups, they were um, these super high impedance pickups that I guess Les Paul had kind of developed when he was making some stuff for the Les Paul recording guitar. But I got a call from Carter's. It was someone offering me a little less money for that guitar. And they said, hey, do you want to take the deal? And I said, well, let me see what they're going for on reverb. And I, I jumped on reverb and I thought I hit completed listings, but I made a mistake. I didn't actually hit completed listings and I was looking at live listings and I saw these photos. And I went, whoa, what the heck is that? Now, I was on the phone, so I had to really quickly, like, you know, be like, okay, yeah, no, no, that's fine. Like, um, yeah, off, tell them they can have it for like 4,500 or something. And um, uh, the gentleman didn't end up buying the guitar. But as soon as I got off the phone, I realized, hey, wait a minute, this guitar is for sale. I hadn't clicked on completed listings. And it was kind of at that moment that I realized, like, whoa, this guitar is something special. This, somebody took a lot of time with this and they really did something special. And I think they made the guitar that should have been, that like the Gibson that should have been made, but never was. And I think all the issues with these Les Paul signatures really got cleaned up here. <laughs> Obviously, the gold finish is gone, and what we have is just this red sparkle. It's beautiful. I mean, it's it's gorgeous. And right here, we can see the guitar's name. It's Ruby. I mean, look at that, Ruby. It's it's that is like a beautiful touch. Now, I do really appreciate the Les Paul signatures for what they are, um, but I think that uh, the gentleman who restored this guitar actually uh, did something genius. He put on these 1972 uh, Gibson embossed. Um, covers and they were only made in 1972 which um, that along with this more traditional configuration you know the two humbuckers which you would never normally find in this guitar you can't actually just take out those high impedance signature pickups and put in p90s or humbuckers they're not the right size so they're not like drop-in replacements for anything so because of that you don't see people buying those guitars and sort of putting them in this configuration but this gentleman had actually found a guitar that someone had switched the pickups out already and then he had uh, uh, taken the finish off the guitar so at that point you know you're really not destroying a vintage piece you're really not sort of breaking the laws of vintage guitar which is like let it be let it be he had the opportunity to sort of make the what if 1972 what if Les Paul signature guitar had existed you know what if they had gone with traditional pickups what if they had used this very cool body style, this unique body style that has a center block, like a block in here, but it's also partially hollow, right? So it's a fully hollow, but with a large block in the middle. So it's not like a 330, it's not like a 335, it's like something else. What if they had put it with the, with the typical Gibson sort of layout? You know, might this have been a very popular alternative to the 335 and the 330? Might this be a guitar that some of our guitar heroes have uh, had, had purchased and used on big records? I, I don't know the answer to those questions, but what I know is I own a piece of not Gibson history, but like maybe in another universe, this is the Gibson to own.
If you don't know, Gibson T-tops are um, the pickups that were sort of made after the PAF. Now we sort of have the PAF, and then we have the patent sticker pickups, and then uh, patent number. Somewhere for, in 1968, Ted McCarty leaves, and we get some other people running Gibson, and they, they change the pickups. You see, the bobbins on the PAFs were notoriously um, sort of delicate. They could break, they could crack. Um, in fact, like, you know, a lot of people's famous bursts would break and they'd replace the pickups. Jimmy Page is probably the most uh, notable pickup replacement, um, Les Paul guy. The bridge pickup, sometime in the mid-70s, uh, broke. And a lot of those 70s recordings of Led Zeppelin, it's actually a T-top in his burst, in his late 50s burst. There's a T-top. These T-tops tonally are a bit different. I find them to be brighter and a little more top-endy. Um, in fact, I kind of actually find this guitar to have a, that like Gibson humbucker sound, but a little bit of like top-end snap, much more like a single coil than I find in like a modern day Gibson. <laughs> So what's this thing worth? That's a bit of a tricky question. You know, typically, the more that you've changed on a vintage guitar, uh, the more that's gonna bring the value down. Vintage guitars seem to be worth the most when they're the most original, the cleanest shape, and of course that's true. And anything sort of that has too much done to it gets classified as player's grade. I don't know what you would call this, some sort of a, uh, you know, a faux restoration, you know, or a project uh, guitar, I guess, but, to me, in this configuration and what this is, um, I would have paid more for this than than uh, for one of the you know vintage correct ones. Um, to me, this guitar is way more usable and way better in this setup. Um, I think it's much more traditional, and um, I think it's just overall a really cool uh, guitar. And I I, I I almost wish Gibson would bring something like this back. I think they could find a lot of success in going after models that like never were, but almost could have been. You know what I mean? Even a guitar like this with P90s or mini humbuckers could be um, uber cool. It's such a great body shape. Um, luckily, I didn't have to pay more um, for this one. Like my, the guitar at Carter's is gonna sell for more than this, than I bought this one for. And I probably would have paid more for this, but um, you know, hey, I mean, you don't really know what you're getting into, right? This thing showed up and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, the harmonica bridge, uh, you know, sort of sign of the 70s, not not the most sought after kind of thing, but um, it's actually, I think, really, really a cool vibe. And, um, you know, beauty is uh, in the eye of the, of the beholder. I think that's true with Ruby, and I think this is like a really cool guitar. I mean, um, I'm, I'm stoked. <laughs>
As always, I have been HW. Thank you so much for watching Tone Jiggy TV. All of the tones you heard in this video were courtesy of the guitars you saw and the camper profile, and all that's for sale on the Tone Junkie Store website, yada, yada, yada. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, HW, out. It's a nice guitar to play. It's like the left hand is happy on it. Yeah. yeah.